Hello, my name's Jason. Hope you're all okay today. Uh, it's good to see you. I just wanted to share uh, something that might be an encouragement to preachers and Christian leaders. Uh, it's from a book called uh, Opposition, a callback series uh, by E and L. Harvey, um, published by Old Path Track Society, uh, copyright uh, Lillian G. Harvey. And um, But I'm just going to read a few quotes from it and then speak about generally. The Bible passage is Psalm 107. Basically, we're just going to read about 2,000 ejected ministers from the Church of England, um, uh, which happened uh, a few year, a few hundred years ago. Um, 200, uh, sorry, 2,000 ministers were, uh, were kicked out of the Church of England. We're just going to read a little bit of what happened to them, and uh, I hope it's an encouragement to preachers to keep going and not be, be not be discouraged psalm 107 verse 4 and 5 says they wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way they found no city to dwell in hungry and thirsty their souls fainted in them then they cried to the lord in their trouble and he delivered them out of their distress psalm 107 verse 4 and 7 psalm 107 verse 7 and he led them forth by the right way that they might go to a city of habitation um, Mr. and Mrs. Harvey write it was a sad day for 2,000 ministers in England when they were deprived of their livings and the doors of both church and manse were closed to them this event afterwards called the Black Bartholomew because it was 100 years after the fearful massacres in France also meant that they had to leave congregations with whom close bonds had been forged and go out to out not knowing whether they went these puritan pastors had refused to comply with the act of conformity which attempted to force them to subscribe to rulings which their conscience forbade one writer wrote some died broken hearted some left the country some became physicians others once famous became private tutors and were heard of in the world no more many with their families had to exchange their life of refinement and competency for a life on the verge of starvation gentlemen and scholars as they were many had to adopt the call of farm servants or artisans so there were these two thousand ministers they were ministering the church of england they got kicked out and many of them lived in poverty afterwards and obscurity there was a story of one uh, minister that was kicked out of the Church of England and he worked on a farm uh, with the sheep and his master uh, got sick and one of the maids said um, call this chap uh, one of your servants who looks after the sheep because he can pray well so they brought this guy uh, to the master who, who used to be a minister of the gospel in the Church of England but was now a shepherd and this sh the shepherd man prayed with such power that the master recognized that this man had uh, great gifts and then the master got well and he realized that his sh the shepherd was actually a, a minister of the gospel and had an ma in theology so that's just one story there's another one here among those banished ministers were men of spiritual stature Joseph Alain of Taunton was not only expelled from his church but was also imprisoned because he insisted on preaching in home or fields. In prison he wrote Alain's Alarm to the Unconverted through which he reached many more persons than would have ever filled his St Mary's church. Even when powerless in both limbs this godly pastor was carried in a chair so that he might continue his ministries. So he was sick and he was ill. <laughs> he was sick and he was ill, Joseph Elaine. And they carried him in a chair or in his bed. They carried him while he was sick. And he's still preaching to people as they carried him around the village. What commitment is that? That's amazing. Well, the story goes on. The writer here goes on to say, 
But just when this dreadful act had done its worst to kick in them out of the Church of England, a ravaging plague swept London during the hot summer of 1665. The people were mowed down by thousands. Loaded with their few movables, many left London for safer, healthier spots. Although with these were those of the established ministry, hirelings who fled the scene in terror. So the plague comes to London and the 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 ministers left in the Church of England who were not really good ministers when the plague came to, to London they left London they left the flocks there were now no spiritual fathers to serve the sick and dying and comfort the sorrowing left behind then it was that the Puritan ministers hastened to the scene of devastation to manifest the love of God which had been imparted to them in the new birth that very experience which had marked them as differing from the clergy around them who had now proved false and cowardly. So they were kicked out of the Church of England. They lived in poverty, many of these ministers. The plague came and hit London. All the false ministers left the flocks in London. But these ministers, these Puritan ministers who'd been kicked out, went back to London and help these people who were dying of the plague to pray and to, to minister to them. Ian Murray says, called the great ejection a watershed shed which divided the two eras in religious history. Thomas Lye, one of the depossessed ministers, termed it the greatest turn that ever was in England. And J.C. Ryle referred to the greatest ejection as an injury to the cause of true religion in England which will probably never be repaired. So that's the great ejection. 2,000 ministers kicked out. So maybe you're a minister today and you've been kicked out of your church because you've been preaching the gospel. I heard last year, a couple of years ago, of a minister training in a, a Baptist seminary and... Uh, because he was preaching uh, from the King James Version of the Bible, and because he was preaching, uh, you need to get saved, the Baptist seminary dis uh, suspended him from preaching because he was using uh, the King James Version and he was preaching that you must be saved. You know, if you're a minister and you are experiencing these kind of things, just remember... Those 2,000 ministers who lost their living, who lived in poverty and then went to minister to the people with the plague. And may that be an encouragement to you to continue your preaching ministry and to never give up ministering the word of God. Keep faithful and the Lord is with you and you are in good company. So God bless you. Let's pray that God will give you the strength to keep going. Father. I pray for the dear ministers of your word today who are struggling and battling and fighting, who have got many scars and are hurt and, and full of pain. Father, I pray that you would comfort them. I pray the story of the great ejection would spur them on to courage and fresh renewal. And Father, you would stir them to preach your word. I ask this, Lord, in your name and for your glory. Amen. Okay, never forget. No matter how much the enemy comes against you as a preacher, look them in the face. Don't fear them and preach the word without fear. All right, God bless you.